I'm Miss Ginsburg with No Adam, and today we're going to be reading Matter and Electricity. This is a student reader in Unit 7. How Electricity Moves, Holiday Lights. Adam Atkinson has a bright hobby. Every December, he puts on a holiday display. It lights up his entire neighborhood. Adam's display is a favorite of many neighbors. His display even has its own Facebook page. It takes Adam all year to plan for it. All of the lights are powered by electricity. Electricity is the flow of electrons through a conductor. Remember that all matter is made of atoms. Atoms are tiny particles too small to be seen. Atoms are made up of even smaller particles. Electrons are one kind of these smaller particles. Electrons have a negative charge. They are in constant motion around the nucleus. Holiday lights are powered by electricity. This is a model of an atom. Conducting electricity. In some kinds of matter, electrons can move from one atom to another. Materials that allow electrons to pass through are electrical conductors. In conductors, the electrons all move in the same direction as one another. Metals are common conductors. Silver, copper, bronze, and aluminum are all metals. They are good electrical conductors. Scientists can control electricity by passing electrons through these materials. Some materials don't allow electrons to pass through. These materials are electrical insulators. Glass, rubber, plastic, and ceramic are all good insulators. Think about the cord that you plug in to turn on holiday lights. The wire inside the cord is metal. The outer part of the cord is plastic or rubber. This keeps the electricity moving through the wires. It also protects you from an electric shock. This diagram shows electricity moving through a conductor. The green outer covering of the wire is an insulator. When electricity reaches a light, the light turns on. This is because the moving electrons transfer electrical energy through a circuit. A circuit is the circular path that electrons travel in a negative to positive direction. All circuits have the same basic parts. All circuits have an energy source such as a battery. The battery has stored chemical energy that converts to electrical energy. This energy provides the force that pushes the electrons in the conductive material through the circuit. All batteries have a negative end and a positive end. Electrons travel from the negative end through the circuit to the positive end. They move because the negatively charged electrons are trapped to the positive side of the battery. This attraction pulls the electrons toward the positive side of the battery. Circuits also have wires. Wires are the paths that electrons travel in the circuit. Energy moves from the battery through the conductors inside the wires. Energy is moved in electric currents through a circuit. The wires in a circuit are attached to an object that can convert electrical energy to do work. Work is any change in position, speed, or state of matter due to force. For example, a light bulb is an object that does work. When electrons reach the light bulb in a circuit, they transfer electrical energy. The light bulb changes the electrical energy into light energy and heat. The same amount of energy that was transferred through the circuit is available to light up the bulb. This is because of the conservation of energy. The electrons then continue on their path. They return to the opposite side of the battery. All circuits must include something that can do work. Without this part, the electricity would cause danger by overheating the circuit. This is called a short circuit. Finally, most circuits have switches. The switch opens and closes the circuit. Electrons flow when a circuit is closed. This is on. A closed circuit will cause the light bulb to light up. Electrons cannot flow when a circuit is open. This is off. No work can be done in an open circuit.
the way a circuit is put together affects the amount of electric current that can do work. Current is a measure of the rate that electric charge passes through a point in an electric circuit over time. In other words, it is the amount of electrons flowing through a circuit over time. The amount of work that can be done increases as current increases. For example, a fast current will cause a light bulb to be brighter than a slow current. This is because more electrons reach the bulb in the same amount of time. Current is measured in amps. An electric current with higher amps has more power. Current is a measure of the rate that electric charge passes through a point in an electric circuit over time. Here's a high current and a low current. Designing a circuit. There are many different ways to design a circuit. We'll use the example of a circuit with a light bulb. A simple circuit has one path and one light bulb. To connect multiple lights, you need either a series circuit or a parallel circuit. A series circuit has one path for electrons to travel, but multiple light bulbs. This means the electricity moves from one light bulb to the next before it returns to the energy source. If one bulb stops working, it breaks the circuit. The electricity cannot continue on its path. In a parallel circuit, there are multiple paths for energy to travel. Each light is connected to the energy source by a separate path. Here's an example of a simple circuit, a series circuit, and a parallel circuit. How to use a multimeter. How to use a multimeter. This instrument will allow you to measure the amount of current or amperage moving through a circuit. It can be used to measure voltage and resistance but only amperage will be measured in your circuits. The dial on the multimeter turns the instrument on and is used to select what you want to measure. Do not use this instrument to test wall outlets or other electrical devices. Use this instrument to test the ends of batteries supplied in the kit and the circuits built in this unit. To extend the life of the battery, the switch should be in the off position when the instrument is not in use and the dial should be turned slowly. Electromagnetic motors, ringing the doorbell. When you go to someone's, someone else's house, the first thing you often do is ring the doorbell. A simple push on a small button sends electricity that powers the sound to the inside of the house. This lets people inside know someone is at the door. Doorbells work because they use a special kind of magnet. Magnets are useful because they can attract or repel, push apart, other objects without touching. All magnets have a north pole and a south pole. The north pole of one magnet always attracts the south pole of another. However, two north poles will always repel each other, as will two south poles. This is why magnets attract some magnetic objects and repel others. This button is connected to an electromagnet and a, and a bell. So here you're, you're seeing magnets attracting and here magnets repelling. Kinds of magnets. There are different kinds of magnets. Permanent magnets stay magnetized without electricity. Natural magnets are magnetized rocks. Temporary magnets act like a permanent magnet when they are within a strong magnetic field. They lose their magnetism when the magnetic field goes away. Paper clips and iron nails are temporary magnets. Finally, electromagnets are tightly wound coils of wire that produce a magnetic field when electricity passes through the wire. These are permanent magnets on the fridge. They stay magnetized without electricity. This is an electromagnetic crane. It temporarily picks up metals and other magnetic materials. Electromagnets. Electromagnets become magnetized when electricity moves through the wire. 
This is because electric current produces a magnetic field. Remember that all of the electrons in a conductor move in the same direction as one another. This produces a magnetic field around the wire. A magnetic field is the area around a magnet that attracts or repels other magnets or objects that contain iron or steel. The magnetic field around a straight wire isn't very strong. However, if the wire is wrapped in a coil, each turn of the coil produces a magnetic field. The magnetic field of each coil combines to create a strong magnetic field when electricity passes through the coil. Electromagnets are useful because the magnet can be turned off by switching the circuit off. It can be turned on by switching the circuit on. Here's an electromagnet. Doorbell electromagnets. Electromagnets are the key to how doorbells work. A simple doorbell is part of a circuit. It has a battery and wires. It also has an electromagnet connected to a magnetic clapper. Finally, it has something that makes noise, such as a bell. When you push the doorbell, you close the circuit. This causes electricity to flow through the doorbell system. The flow of electricity creates a magnetic field around the electromagnet. This magnetic field pulls on the magnetic clapper. When the clapper strikes the bell, it makes a noise. The movement of the clapper striking the bell also opens the circuit. This stops the flow of electricity. As a result, the electromagnet is no longer magnetized. How a doorbell uses an electromagnet in a circuit. Motors. Magnets are part of many electronic devices because they are used to drive small motors. A motor is a machine that transfers an input of energy into an output of kinetic energy. In an electromagnetic motor, electrical energy is converted into kinetic energy. The electromagnetic motor has two parts, an outside permanent magnet and an inside electromagnet. The electromagnet becomes magnetized when it is connected to an electrical current. It then spins rapidly because it is surrounded by the permanent magnet. If a gear is attached to the spinning electromagnet, the gear can be made to do work. An electromagnetic motor. I learned a lot reading matter and electricity. I hope that you did too. I'll see you tomorrow with another one. Bye.